In South Florida in the Keys, there are two slams that we consider. There's a flat slam, which is bonefish permanent tarpon, and here in the Everglades, there's a backcountry slam, which is a tarpon, redfish, and a snook. And especially when you're throwing artificial or fly fishing, catching a redfish, tarpon, and a snook in the same day is not easily done. South Florida just came through a major hurricane, Hurricane Irma, and one of the things that a lot of the old timers have talked about for a long time, because we've had water issues here in the Everglades and the Keys, is we need a big hurricane to come flush the system out and give everything a fresh start. So once they opened the park after the hurricane damage was clear, I called Pete up and we came down together to see what the park looked like. Often on any given day of fishing, you know, when I leave the dock, and this day was especially that way because I didn't know what the conditions were going to be like. I didn't know what kind of destruction the hurricane left in its path. I just wanted to run around and, and see what the environment looked like and kind of let my, my nose send me in the right direction, you know, as far as what species to chase. Bunch of them past that tree. There he is. Hell yeah. <laughs> Little guy. You like it. Fall back a little, Pete. So we don't mess those other ones up that are in there. God, these little fish are so fun, man. They really are. They were like made for fly fishing. Yeah. You know? Hooked him in the chin. <laughs> like he swiped at it and missed yeah. it, you know? It's all right. Probably Still. the only reason he's stuck. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hooked him in that soft. Cute little fish, man. Yeah. Cool. They do everything the big ones do, just at a little smaller pace. Yep. <laughs> my favorite fish is a big tarpon a giant tarpon catching them with a fly rod. But I think my next second favorite would be little tarpon. They do everything a big fish does. They're a little more cooperative when it comes to biting often. They're often in big groups, so you get multiple bites. And they do everything the big ones do without a, a long, hour-long fight. You, know, you get a few jumps and they're both side, you let them go and catch another one. They're great, great game fish. After it. That was cool, man. Did you see that wake? I did. Oh, it got off. Dang it. Man, you can see that wake Pushing coming up behind it. That was so cool. There he is. Uh oh. Yeah, I got him out of the tree. God, these things are so much fun, man. So much fun. They always gotta get your glasses wet. You know what, they're all, they're all fun. Doesn't matter, just some are better than others. Okay. You wanna catch one? I'd love to. Come on, get up there. Oh man, you must have hit him right on the head. That's a great one. Good job, brother. <laughs> it did hit him right on top of the head. Man, I that think was like a reaction. Yeah, I don't even think I don't even think that that you moved it. He was on.
The Sea Hunter is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Sea Hunter boats, indestructible, unsinkable. Yeti coolers, built for the wild. Yamaha outboards. Wet sounds, the ultimate sound machine for your boat. Garmin Verbs, the official action camera of the Sea Hunter. Peter's a young man I met seven or eight years ago that, that showed a little interest in fishing at the time when we first met. It didn't take me long after knowing Pete to realize that he had a passion. He was serious about fishing. So, you know, I started fishing with him a little bit and actually he started doing a lot of camera boat work for a lot of the shows that I've been on in the past few years. We've become very, very good friends. We've become very close. And uh, there's, there's no other person I'd rather be on the water with on a day when I don't have to work. Oh man, you must have hit him right on the head. That's a great one. Good job, brother. <laughs> it did hit him right on top of the head. Man, I it think, was like a reaction. Yeah, I don't even think I don't even think that that you moved it. He was on. <laughs> if he goes around the tree, just open your bail. Tell me where you're at, I can't see it. I think you're clear. Yeah, you're I'm good. clear. That was awesome, man. That of course, you gotta cool. be a show off and catch a bigger one than I did. <laughs> Fun size fish on that little rod. It is. wanted to make sure he got your glasses wet. That's a great little fish, man. It is. That's awesome. That was really Way cool. to go. It really Would is. Would it take you three casts? Show off? <laughs> I'm up there for two hours. Yeah, let him go, man. He earned it. Oh yeah, he went away good. Way to go, brother. Yeah, this is one of those situations. The current's coming out. And if you move really slow, the fish don't feel you. The big mother load of the fish are right at the mouth of the creek. You can see them rolling up there, but they're sprinkled out in the mouth of it too. And if you go in there too hard or, you know, you spook these fish that are on the outskirts, they shoot up the creek and they spook everybody. You know, it's game over. You just be patient and just pick away at them. You'll catch a lot more fish. Oh, he's a jumper, jeez. I hooked him because he surprised me. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to jerk it away from him. <laughs> when you're good. Yeah, these fish are so fun. I like catching baby tarpon because they're just they're always willing to eat, and they're very aggressive. Usually when you can find one, there's more than one around, so there's always another fish to catch. Thanks, brother. Yep. Snook, man, snook. We need a snook. <laughs> Nice one, too. Good job. Hoping to see a snook. Yeah, I know. That's what I thought that's it was okay. at first. <laughs> Never turned down a tarpon. Never. Looks like he's quite ready for you yet. Yep, that was the that was the final glasses spray right there. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Thank you. Great little fish. I don't know how you could ever get tired of doing that. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, as the as the light got higher, you know, the carp tarpon bite kind of slowed down. We had caught a bunch. We'd already had a great morning. 
we wanted to look around some more, see some more of the coastline, see what kind of more destruction the hurricane left behind it. So we ran up the coast and, and tried to look for a redfish. This would be my basic arsenal that I would take on a day of guiding or a day of filming in the backcountry. Have my 40 pound leader, 20 pound leader, good pair of pliers with some cutters, some jigs, some plugs, some soft plastics. I have a, a temple fork rod that's a, a three power rod, light enough to throw a small bait. I have an edge rod that's heavy enough. This is a five power, heavy enough to ho hold a big bait. A two power for a really, really light jig, finesse fishing a five power for throwing big baits or possibly big tarpon or big snook. And this would be my super technical detailed casting rod. It's a four power, six foot nine inshore series through a fluke like skipping under the mangroves. And I do like to go old school sometimes and I take a plug rod just for bait casting. This may seem like a lot of rods to take for one day of fishing, but you never know what you're gonna encounter and having a various amount of rods rigged with different baits, different leader lengths, different finesse baits. Any opportunity that arises, I'm gonna be ready for it. You know, as, as we ran up the coastline, we noticed a lot of tree damage, which, which we kind of expected. Um, but one of the things you worry about is, is the sandbar shift. And because you're dealing with a major storm surge with a, with a hurricane of that degree. And as we went further and further up the coast, we actually saw bars that, that weren't there, that used to be there, and there were bars in places that, that weren't shallow, you know, in previous times to the hurricane. So it's gonna kind of be a, a, a learning experience, relearning the same place because a lot of the topography here has changed. There's a fish way inside. A, hold on, there's a fish right here, bro. Hold on. God dang, I looked down, I thought it was a tree. Look at the size of that thing. Here's a fish right inside of us. Two fish, see them boil? Oh yeah, yeah, I got them. God dang. He grabbed it and dropped it. See him still? Yeah, he's still in the same spot. Oh yeah, I got him, I got him. I feel like he's looking for it. Exactly, yeah. Might be a shark. Grab the back of it. There it is. Oh. Yep, yeah, shark. <laughs> Looking in the glare there, you couldn't tell, you know? You don't want to do that slowly. <laughs> when you decide you're going to grab him, because he will bite your butt, man. That would suck. I guide so much, I don't get to fish very often, so it's not many opportunities I pass. When I get on the bow, I take that opportunity, and Pete's always pretty good about that. I love fishing with the kid because he's a sponge. You know, anything that, that I share with him knowledge-wise, he takes it in, and, and he appreciates it. And in, in today's modern day youth, it's not often that you see somebody who appreciates learning from somebody who has a little more history behind them. Yeah, I think I see a couple of fish sitting right there on that oh, snag. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right here at two o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, I got them. Hold up, Pete. Bunch of fish in there. Oh yeah. Oh, he spun on it. Yeah. New one here. Ah. There he is. Uh, that was sick. There's a whole bunch here. Just hold up. 
Nice redfish. Good spot, buddy. It's the first redfish in this boat. Oh yeah, it's a nice fish. Not quite ready yet. Not done yet. That'll work. Thanks, That's brother. Good. That was a, that was sick. Just he lost it for a second. Yeah, well, I, I didn't wasn't a very good cast. I threw it behind him, but he sensed it as it went by him. Yeah. Know? He wasn't coming unhooked. I'll take that. Thanks, Pete. Fine. Wanna get up here? Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> After fishing a little bit longer, you know, we saw a few more fish, didn't connect. After talking to Pete, we realized we we're two thirds of our way to a backcountry slam. And what better way to end it than to, than to get a snook under our belt. And it's not every day you get an opportunity to catch a slam. So it's kind of a big deal. Keep up with the Sea Hunter on social media. Follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. You can also visit us at theseahuntertv.com. The Sea Hunters brought to you by Ray Marine, Simply Superior, Mojo Sportswear, get your mojo on, TFO Rods, power to the angler, Sea Star Solutions, Best Fab, Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. You know, there are, in South Florida in the Keys, there are two slams that we consider. There's a flat slam, which is bonefish, permanent tarpon, and here in the Everglades, there's a backcountry slam, which is a tarpon, redfish, and a snook. And especially when you're throwing artificial or fly fishing, Catching a redfish, tarpon, and a snook in the same day is not easily done. There you go, buddy. There he is. <laughs> you know what? That wasn't a big one, but that did complete the slam. It did. Worked all day for it. I do think we deserve a bigger one than that, though. Look at that one. Good job. They're great fish, man. They're so fun. They are. All right, catch his daddy. That's a better fish there, buddy. Yeah, it is. Much better fish. Where's he at on the tree? Man, that thing took off like a freight train. What'd you hook? Don't fool him too much. If he gets in the trees, just let him do his thing. That's not real heavy braid. It's got to be a snook. It is. Oh my God. He's all the way out here. My line's through oh the boy, trees. That's not good. Okay, don't, don't stay super tight with him. No, I'm, I'm I'll get you in there. We'll try and get your line untangled. You clear? Yep. Are you to the fish or are you on oh, something he's else? Oh, he's got me on another tree. He's got, to, he's got to have run under it. He's right there. The big fish. Yeah, that's that's the way I would think he, he would be.
Look at that sucker, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, hey, Just pull it real slow, bro. I am. Oh man, this stuff is so bar, I can't believe he didn't cut you off. Here, grab the fish. Just grab the fish. Holy moly, bro. I don't <laughs> believe you caught that fish. <laughs> <laughs> I do not believe you did not oh come my off. God, dude. Dude. I do not believe you did not lose that fish. He I mean, has no dorsal. I've never seen that before. You know oh what? All that effort just paid Dude. off, brother. The you end know, of the it just day. paid off. That is crazy. Look at the barnacles, man. This stuff's cutting my hand. Holding I don't it. get it. It was meant to be. You know what? What's that? that tells you something right there. Why? Why you fish braid? There was mono would have never held up to that. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's light braid. It's like ten pound braid. <laughs> it just shows you when it's meant to be. It's meant to be. Mm. I think he's good. Yeah, just give her a shove, she's fine. Here we go. Here, go. Here she goes, brother. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she swam off good. Thank you so much for that. That was amazing. Are you kidding? <laughs> that was awesome, brother. Great angling. Thank you. Picking for away the little ones, I'm like, oh man, we finally got a slam. We got to catch, we got to count a slam with a snook this big. Yeah. Negative. You just caught the mother. <laughs> that was. That was a you big said fish. It. You know, after going through a few weeks of hurricane cleanup and, and dealing with all that living and without power, and to be able to come back here with Pete and see what the Everglades look like after the storm, spend a day on the water, catch a slam, and catch a jumbo snook, I don't know how it could be any better.